my viewers and welcome to the channel and welcome to another episode from the Lattice Workbench 2 series. Today we're going to be looking at revolving around a helix. So we're going to be creating a single extrude and taking that and placing that around this helix. We're going to be using the Lattice 2 Project Array to allow us to do this, to create a placement around the helix and attach the extrude to that placement. It's quite a useful technique to have in the toolbox. So let's have a look at this technique. If you like what you're seeing, please subscribe to the site. I also have a Ko-Fi or a coffee site that you can donate to if you so desire. And that's at ko-fi.com forward slash M-A-N-G-0. I also run a Patreon where you can subscribe and get extra content. And that's at www.patreon.com forward slash mango jelly solutions. Any money that's kindly donated will be used to span the channel. Now, if you haven't got the Lattice Workbench installed, it's on the Add-ons Manager, and it's just here. And we can just install it from here. I've already got it installed, so I'm gonna progress. And we're gonna start in the SketchUp. Now I'm gonna create a sketch, looking down on the XY plane. Now the idea is to figure out what we want to revolve around that helix. I'm gonna use a basic step. So I'm gonna create two circles to get the idea of where I'm going to place these. I'm going to set the diameter of both these circles. Actually, we're going to set the radius. So we can come in and set the radius. Set this one to 50 millimeters and the radius of this one to 25. From that, I can work out the angle of the step that I want to revolve around the helix. So we look at the screen, this is basically divided in four with the horizontal and vertical axis. I want eight steps going around the helix. So I'm going to divide this with two lines and use angle constraints in here. So one and two. I'm not gonna worry about the length of these because we're gonna trim them out in a moment. I'm just gonna set an angle between these two using the angle constraint and set this to 45 degrees. So now we've got our dimensions and we can start trimming this to make the step. This is important because of the amount of steps I want to fit around the helix. So we're looking at eight steps. We also need to understand the diameter of this to match up with the helix. So I'm gonna use the trim tool, this one here, and come in and start trimming these. So I'm gonna take away these two lines, they will connect up to this circle. Let's do the same here with this line and this line, and then I'm gonna trim the outer and inner circles. So we're left with this. Now I'm just gonna hit escape to get the mouse pointer back. Now we've got this shape, we can use this with our helix in the lattice to workbench. First of all, we need a helix. I'm going to close that. I'm going to jump over to the part workbench. And I'm going to create a helix. So come up to part. Create primitives. And we can drop down this option here and come all the way down to helix. Now this is important with the height and the actual radius here. So we can set these. So I'm going to set the height to something like 100 millimeters, and we'll match that in our Lattice 2 workbench. And we can set the radius to the inner radius of 25 millimeters, and we'll create. And you can see we've got too much of a pitch on here, so that's close. We don't hit create again, otherwise this will actually create another helix. Just come into the helix, come down to the pitch, and we can increase this pitch. As we increase it, you can see what's happening here. So we can decide how tall this is going to be. I'm just gonna do this for basically one revolution of the helix. So I'm gonna reduce the height down and we'll reduce the height down. You can see what happens when we reduce the height. This helix actually reduces down. So let's go for something like 20 and look at this from the top. And let's reduce this right down to 
top and I think the whole resolution will be about 50 millimeters or just, just off. So we'll just match those two points there. So now we've got the helix in there, just done one resolution. We can start using this with the lattice workbench. We'll increase the resolution of this later. We could extrude this or we could keep it as it is so we could keep the sketch and actually revolve it around here. Let's add some extrusion to that sketch. So we're going to hit the extrude and just extrude it by say 5 mil. So we've got some height. Let's jump over to lattice 2. Now in lattice 2, if we come over to the extrude and double click the sketch, we can see how that helix sits in line with our sketch. Let's just hit close. First of all, we've got the radius of 25 millimeters and the other radius of 50 millimeters, which comes out here. Let's pull this over here so we can see what's actually happening. So we can see this is this point and this is for this point here. So 25 millimeters is the one we're interested in. So this is the radius of this helix. Let's hit close. And now we need a linear ray because this linear ray will go through the center of this helix. And we'll use this as a path to actually wrap the linear ray around here. First of all, we must make sure that nothing is selected. Once nothing's selected, go up to lattice two, come down to linear ray, and then a linear ray span slash n. We can choose any of these, but we may need to change the mode. This span slash n is the mode for the distribution of the arrows that you'll see around there, those kites around that lattice linear array. Let's click on that. We can see how that's placed. Now we need to set this to the amount of sections that are going to be revolved around here, which is eight. So click on the linear array, come down to the count and set this to eight. So we've got eight along there. When you come down, you may see the number of elements. So the number of elements here, this is a read only option. And this used to catch me out at first. I used to try to edit this, but we can't actually edit this. It's the actual count down the bottom. So now we've got our linear array. We need to rotate this upwards and also match the height to the helix. To do that, we've got the basic transforms. To right click transform and we can rotate this. So I'm just gonna click on the front make this a lot easier and just rotate this up and hit OK. Now we have that rotated. It's all in line with this helix because it's all started on the same plane. We need to match the height of this to the helix because we try to place this along this helix. We will get bunching on one end because this is actually longer than the height. On the linear array, if we come down to the bottom, we can see we've got span end and span start. So the span end needs to be the same height as this helix. Let's click on the helix and look at the height. At the moment it's 14.7. Let's copy that and go to the linear array and come down to that span end and paste that in there. So 14.7. So the top of that is actually level with that helix. It's dead center because we've attached it to the point of origin. This is built around the point of origin. So everything's centered nicely. We're now going to place this linear array around this helix. To do that, we come over to the linear array, click that first, control click the helix. So the order matters, linear array first, then the helix. And then we're going to use this icon here, the project array. We can also get to that from lattice two and project array. We will get an error. This is fine. Just hit continue and come down to the new icon on the left hand side in the tree view. Click the project and then come down. And we're looking for the orientation mode. If we drop this down, we've got a number of orientation modes. So we've got keep, click off of that. We can see that these are placed all in this orientation here. And you can see how they're distributed across there. Let's change that mode to long gap. 
And this is more of an orientation that we want. We can now align this with these kites. The best idea is to actually place a placement upon this. So I'm going to click the extrude and come up to the placement. Also available, and that is to attach placement and attach placement. We've got the placement in there, it's deactivated. You can see the plane has been selected, is phase six, the one we selected. Let's remove that and click on the plane. Now it's saying selecting, we can select an edge. So I'm going to select this edge, and this is the one I'm going to be using to actually align this kite with. Click Z tangent to edge. That places the z-axis of this kite tangent to that edge. If we come in, we can see it sitting there. So this is the z-axis going through the kite. We look at this kite, z actually runs this way through the back up. Let's come down to make some adjustments. Now we're looking at the rotations. So we start rotating these. You can see that 90 degrees flips the kite upside down along the X. So we need minus 90 degrees along there and that'll flip it up the right way. So we need to rotate this around the Y axis, this one here. So we start moving this, we can see that's being rotated there. And what we're going to do is just line this up with that edge. So we've got it lined up with that edge. So we've got the kite facing this way we will match kite for kite. So when this is placed upon here, this will match up with this one and lay it on top of here. Let's come up, hit OK. And now we can start placing these around this helix. We're still in the lattice too. So we need to click the extrude, our shape, control click the placement of that extrude, and then click the project array. So this one that rolls around here. So those are in that order. We will then use the move object because we've got a placement attached to that object. Also available from Lattice 2. Populate with copies and move object. We can see how that object has been rotated around that helix. And now we can do some finer adjustments to the helix to close up some of these gaps or to change the style of the helix and the length of the helix for these to be distributed in a different manner. So I'm going to click on the helix and come down to the radius. And we're just going to tweak this radius. So I'm going to reduce it by 20. And that's pulled that in. You can see we've got this odd one over to the right. This is the original. If we're coming into the move extrude, you can see the extrude is still sitting there. Just press the space bar on there just to hide it. So that's out of the way now. We've pulled those in, but we can adjust the underlying sketch to make this a better fit if we so desire. So you can see how those are rotated around there. And with a little bit of adjustment, we can get these to fit tightly to each other by adjusting the sketch and also by adjusting the helix. Just remember that we've created a placement but we can actually modify that to have an angle on there to allow us to do such things as turbines and fins and fans in there. We can do that by coming to the, back to the original extrude. I'm just going to hide some of the geometry in there. And if we come down to the project, I'm inside here, we're looking at the placement. Now placement sits here. We can alter this placement and rotate it. So we double click the placement and change the rotation, say on the X axis. And we'll rotate that. Hit OK. and then bring back the extrude, hit Ctrl R, and then we've got these at an angle, and we need to just hide the original extrude. So we can rotate those around the helix at an angle.
to allow us to do more complex geometry if you're creating such things as turbines or fans. Obviously we won't have this kind of pitch in here and this helix. We'll just bring this helix in a bit or even revolve this around a circle. So I hope you enjoyed that video. I hope that's opening up the Lattice 2 workbench for you. And I'll see you again in the next video. If you like what you're seeing, please subscribe to the site. I also have a Ko-Fi or a coffee site that you can donate to if you so desire. And that's at ko-fi.com forward slash mang0. I also run a Patreon where you can subscribe and get extra content. And that's at www.patreon.com forward slash mango jelly solutions. Any money that's kindly donated will be used to expand the channel. Thanks a lot for watching and subscribing and I'll see you again soon.